Did you know that silicon metal manufacturing is the largest emitter of CO2 on a per ton basis on the planet? HPQ Silicon is on the verge of disrupting the manufacturing process of fume silica, which uses silicon metal in the everyday products that you and I all use, including cosmetics, toothpaste, and powdered foods. So how disruptive is the HPQ Silicon process? Energy consumption, 93% lower. Greenhouse gases, almost 88% lower. Hydrogen chloride gas, none, completely eliminated. And CapEx, the cost of doing all that, reduced by 93%. And more than just talk, the fume silica industry has taken notice as evidenced by multiple NDAs with leading manufacturers immediately after HPQ announced the successful production of fume silica samples through its proprietary reactor technology. So what are we talking about today? The company's press release, internal technical and economic study indicates HPQ film silica reactors robust potential at commercial scale. Bernard, welcome back, my friend. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Happy 2024. Should be a good and interesting year. Well, you ended off 2023 with a bang. I mean, the whole year was incredible. But from August, when I was in Greece, right through to Christmas time, you were just coming with you know big press release after press release. And now we've started off the new year with a big one. Before we go into the details, I think here's the most mm -hmm. uh, important question I have to start off. What or who prompted this study? Because you say in the press release, it was prompted by an inquiry from a participant in the fume silica industry under NDA. So mm -hmm. how did this get prompted? Why does this participant uh, ask for this inquiry? Well, if you remember in the previous past release, when I talked about the fume silica reactor, you know, I always said it was robust. It looked financially very, very good, but I think in our press release, we kept talking of going from a 50-ton pilot plant to a 250-ton commercial plant to start off with, and then have an organic growth process within the uh, within the uh, the sphere of fume silica manufacturing. And that was already economically very robust. Like, <laughs> As I said then, it supported the, the market cap of the company at its highest, and when we were at the highest point, you know, it validated that. So it was there. What happens is we're under NDA, therefore there is ongoing discussion, advancement, understanding, exchange of information between different parties. Um, and they have seen, because it was part of the public information we had published, that we were talking about 250 ton per year. And they came back to us and they sort of said, well, you know, it's like, okay, is there a, is there a specific reason why you, did, you chose the number 250 ton? Or was it because there's limitation, can't scale up more than this, you have to build, you know, 20, you know, because the technology can be great, but you can only have small system that doesn't make any economic sense. So uh, that was a question. And we, and our answer was, you know, no, there was no, there was no reason other than it was our, our originally organic plan, because my idea was, uh, how can we enter this space smart, intelligently, without requiring too much capital and start generating Profits, good profit margin, because fundamentally, the profit margin we're showing, we would have shown the same profit margin on a small scale. It's just that if you do, if you do four times as much material, you make four times as much money. It's not very complicated to do. But they asked us the question, and that made me rev revise the entire um, scoping, and then we got into a position where okay, it is now time for HPQ to start showing these numbers to investors and to the investor communities, and you can't do it bits and pieces. Uh, I kept saying I'm reworking on my on my investor deck. Well, I was going to put those numbers. So we have to come and publish it. And so the, the reason is, is truthful. We are in discussion with a, uh, we are in discussion with multiple fume silica participants. One of them, probably more advanced than other. As I, as I said in my quotes, has gone from the material to, okay, let's start talking numbers. I, okay, what should we be reading into, if anything? The fact that when you first started talking about fume silica, you talked about scaling from 50 to 250, and now we know why, because you just used it as a, you know, a, a reasonable, sensible number. Uh, mm -hmm. And then- For HPQ alone. The NDA, and then the NDA part. By the way, can I know, obviously we don't know who any of the, the three NDAs are with, 
But mm -hmm. can you tell us at least if this is with NDA group number one, two, or three? Are we allowed Wouldn't to know change that anything. at least? Wouldn't change anything. All right. No. So what should we be? So here's where the question I want to get to. What should we be reading into the fact that they came to you and asked, "Hey Bernard, why 250 as uh, uh, 250 tons per year? Why not a thousand? We know why you picked out 250. Why are they talking about a thousand tons per year? At home, okay. a lot of us are thinking, "Hey, these guys may be thinking of, you know, going further with HPQ silicon. They want to see how much production they can get out of." Well, if you right. if if you look Tell at us. the if you look at the press release and the information we put, one of our goals is to have an off take agreement. Okay. Now, what I've discovered, learned from this industry is that it's a very static industry. Okay, and it now reaches a point because of its environmental constraint. Okay, where they are limited in meeting anticipated or new demand. So. In a certain thinking, okay, they know that our technology can cannibalize their operation, wow. which may end up costing them a lot of money if, it's, if we go directly and cannibalizing them. But they also know, okay, that there's a massive opportunity for additional demand, which they cannot meet for nothing else than uh, environmental obligations that they have, okay? Okay. These are all very large enterprises which are publicly made public statement that they want to be carbon neutral by you know 15 or 20 years. They want to have their entire production in 15, 20 years. So it makes no sense for them, okay, to meet the additional demand by having new production that is very carbon intensive. So there is a beautiful oh, the new demand, for... Bernard, is that coming from new applications for fume silica? Or is that just the fact that, you know, markets grow for products 5%, 6%, 8%? Is there a specific source or just they're just experiencing higher demand like everything else over time? Okay. It's, if you just read the material, the information, the market for fume silica is growing 5% compounded annual rate every year. Okay. It's a 1.5, 1.3 billion dollar market. That's 63 million dollars of new demand. Get an average price of, I don't know, 10, 10 dollars per kilogram, 10 thousand dollars per ton. That's 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 a few thousand tons, but they can't meet them because they're at maximum capacity. So, and remember the capex. You see, wow. the issue is it's the same issue that there was with silicone. The issue is. You can't increase capacity more than you can have the rest of the chain that comes in. And this is where the capex per kilogram differentiation comes into it. We have that flexibility. We can come in into a market and nobody can really come and compete and they can't fight us on price and they can't fight us on environmental constraint. So the, the idea behind this was, oh, if they're asking this question, I think it is interesting that I share this information with my shareholders as we come into what I consider to be the most exciting phase of the fume silica project, which is going to be between now and when the pilot plant validates everything that we've said. So putting a couple of things there together, putting on my legal, my legal brain, they're at max capacity. They're now asking you, hey, is there anything stopping you from taking a pilot plant to 1,000 tons per year? They've got increased demand coming in that they can't match. I got to ask you, it sounds like you guys are coming close. I'm just going to, I'm going to use the, those. These are my words, but it sounds like there's real visibility. When I say close, I should, there's real visibility as to potentially working together in one way or another. Uh, just from what you said, they're at max capacity. They're asking you if you get your pilot plant up to a thousand tons per year. Mm -hmm. Am, am I, am, that seems to be the natural conclusion. So I have to ask you. But that's the normal, that's, that's a normal conclusion of how you develop these type of technologies. Okay. Think about it this way. Everybody uses oil and gas. Everybody uses gas in their car. Okay. So but everybody knows that to, to make gas, you got to have a big refinery system. All right. Got to bring in the oil, do the refinery and do everything else. So there's tons of cost to this. To getting your gas in your car. Okay. 
Well, think about this. We are manufacturing the equivalent of gas. If you want an example, we don't need the refinery. We have a big black box for them. That's what it, because we don't give out too much of the secret. It's a big black box where we take quartz, plasma, we make fume silica. We've done this. They've tested our material. We presented third party independent results. We've made fume silica. Okay. So they know, and we can, you know, since we don't have the refinery, our cost is never going to be the same from CapEx to everything else. So they know this. Now, the question is, it sounds too good to be true. Uh, and that's where but, we're playing. And it, so, but, but. but the funny part is, okay, the too good to be true is on the way of being eliminated, okay? It was too good to be true when we said we made fume silica and they, they tested the material. And their first objective was, oh, fuck, it's, it's shit, your material. And he came back and says, no, it's not shit. Because, and we came back and confirmed that. Um, and then we're moving on to the next stage, okay? Can you guys, are you guys going to be able to scale up at commercial scale? We sort of answered their queries on that, okay? And now it says, oh, okay, can you guys go bigger scale? Said, yeah. We could go probably bigger than a thousand tons if we wanted to. But at this moment, like it's, it's safe within the, the the scaling up rules. And then once we get the thousand ton system working well, then just copy and paste. And then, you know, we can squeeze pyro and just we'll, we'll get a better cost of building more system. So it's it's a great number, 1.7 payback, organic growth, those issues. So and all of this is going to be proven this year. Okay. So that's a long answer, but I can feel everyone at home Saying, George, yes, you're probably going to make me, me to make it shorter. Is okay, there go. visibility given the fact that the big the big manufacturer and the NDA are at their capacity? They can't meet new demand in, in a way that's uh, carbon that's environmentally friendly, and mm -hmm. they're asking you if you could do a thousand tons per year in your pilot plant. Should we read it's that? Not a pilot as plant, as George, real George, visibility George, George, George. It's not a pilot plant. They're asking us if we can go, a configuration can go from the 50-ton pilot plant to a 1,000-ton uh, commercial plant. Okay, right. let's be very clear Either what way. we're saying. Yeah, yeah. So does that, should we read that as visibility? That, that it hasn't happened yet. I'm not saying the deal's on the table, but it seems like you're really advanced far down the road. That's that's just a natural implication. Well, the way to read it is, is twofold, Okay. One of them, and yes, at least with one of the partners, we are there in the discussion, okay? And two, contrary to popular belief and, and, and FUD literature and FUD belief, okay, this is not a FUD press release. This is a press release where we share the information with other participants that might not be interested in There might be somebody that needs fume silica in their application that would love to be completely independent and self-sufficient on it. There is multiple application. How is a company, you know, sometimes investors, you know, because I get very excited when I talk about these issues and sometimes I, I can sound very confused and, and everything else because I know so much information, okay? But what I know, until I issue a press release on it, nobody, not too many people know about it. Other people that sign NDAs, but the concept of NDAs is you can't really discuss. Now, the information I am sharing, okay, is our information. It's my information I'm sharing. It's mine. It's our internal economic and technical studies, pyrogenesis and us. So, but I thought, it, I believe it was a great time. I I really believe like a few few weeks ago, a few months ago, we had an, we had an interview about this. And I was saying the fume silica, the economics of it are so strong, they can support the, uh, the market cap at our top. Well, imagine now we're talking four times bigger. <laughs> They're even more. That's why I didn't bother to go through much of the numbers. The numbers are so big that at one point it's like that's not the focus. The focus is we have a technology; it's economically viable. It will be disruptive in the in the place, but there is a way for us to either work in parallel with the industry or just be a disruptive agent. But it's not well, going to require. And, and this, and, and we're we're at the right time. This is the time to start speculating, okay, on the outlook. 
Yes, we haven't done By it. By the yet. way, but you're not speculating because you didn't wake up on January first. Said, let's throw some numbers out there. No, you no, 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 no. One of the no, NBA no, participants I'm, I'm say, just saying because run the numbers for us, right? No, it, it, in a sense, the question I get asked, okay, if this is so great, how come it doesn't reflect yet in the share price, okay? And it's it's going to reflect as we start talking more. I haven't I haven't really discussed about the robust economics. Remember. My main point was discussing that our black box can make fume silica commercial grade. That attracted the interest of people in industry. Natural, the natural evolution of the discussion is, okay, let's start thinking commercially about this. This is where we are in that evolution. By me issuing this press release, I'm also saying to the market at large, I'm open to those discussions. Okay, two things I want to say about that. One is the Fudsters, I love that you bring them up because you always shoot them down. But I think it's fair to say they've been completely wiped out in terms of credibility because when you first announced fume silica as a thing, there was criticism. When you announced that you had samples available, there was a criticism. Now we're at NDAs. Now we're at NDA participants asking for the economics of a thousand ton commercial plant. So I think they're done. But the second part is no, <laughs> you say you put these numbers out and we're going to put these numbers up in a second on the screen because I want to go over, over, over there, over with them, mm -hmm. with everybody else. But you say you put these numbers out because you want to share them with shareholders, which is great. And of course, but is a part of that also Bernard, look, I come from a messaging world, a marketing world. Is a part of putting these numbers out there also to send a signal, to send a message to the market that, hey, we know our numbers. Mm -hmm. And now we know you know the numbers and everybody does so that it creates a little more velocity in terms mm -hmm. of who may or may not, if ever, uh, you know, gets a deal done with you. Is there is is that a part of it, sending out a signal? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's called marketing. You know, like, I, 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 I still don't get it. Why people say, you know, people when people do marketing, marketing is what you tell the market what you have, where you're going, where it's advancing. Okay, you can take you can take a check mark of what we've done, accomplished. Take a check mark of one of the things I want to do. I believe strongly that by the end of this year, we will have an off take agreement for that thousand ton. I that's my belief. I have nothing wow. concrete to say this, but I strongly believe we will get that. Um, and then, you know, we're strongly going to get lots of people interest into it, but there are multiple options open to us. How are we going to develop this? And as we get closer to the pilot plant being operational and us starting to make product, okay, and sending them to, to more and more people, uh, those options are going to start moving faster. Okay. So my message to investors is, uh, hold on, it's going to be a fun ride because we have a magical black box, which isn't a magical black box. I call it the black box because we don't give out all the secret how we do everything. It's just, it's just it's our black box, quartz, energy, comes out of fume silica. We validated quartz, the energy, we validated the fume silica as commercial, and we now validated this black box can be made to a side when you have an economically robust system. As I said, in a certain way, what we're doing for people to understand very, very simply Okay, everybody understands the concept of putting gas in their car. Everybody uses fume silica in all their material. Okay. Well, imagine if you can have gas without the refinery, it's going to be much cheaper. So the guy that has a refinery cannot compete with a guy that doesn't have a refinery, doesn't need the refinery. So that's what we have. Okay. Now, when are we going to become an existential threat or opportunity for them? They might be willing to say, you know what? We'll wait till they make it at the, uh, I don't care. I don't know how many times I've ever heard this from investors. Oh, I'm not going to invest now. I'm going to pay. I'm willing to pay more later because it'll be de-risked. Never believe that, but still. Okay. And you understand that, George. You've heard that many times. There are some investors like that. Actually, I won't criticize investors like that. If someone says, I'm not willing to pay 23, 25 cents today. I'm willing to pay a dollar tomorrow with more certainty. I know there are some people who do that. I, I, yeah, won't I know, but, but uh, it's some the people same buy thing. Apple at ten dollars a share. Some people buy Apple at five hundred dollars a share. That's that's just what it comes down to. 
Uh, yes, but with retrospect, can we I should have bought Apple at ten dollars a share then. Buddy, let me tell you that I had one of my best friends telling me at ten, twelve, fifteen dollars a share to buy Apple before the iPhone and all that. But that's another conversation, and uh, and mm -hmm. I probably made the same mistake. Let's put the numbers up, Bernard, for everyone mm -hmm. to see because I want to talk about them a little bit. That 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 table. That for me, when I saw it, and while we're waiting for you to put it up, for me, when I saw it, I said to myself, okay, if I'm in this industry, if I'm a fume silica manufacturer, and I see this public released by a public company, which makes a difference if it's a Gore Calm fume silica, George Calm fume silica, you may not have to believe the numbers because say, hey, private company no regulation he can put out whatever he wants but you're a public company you're regulated very closely so these numbers are you know uh the credibility is well is, is, well is well, unimpeachable it's, it's like a research so, paper now i point when i do my press releases so if i see these numbers that i'm in the industry all right mm -hmm. one of two things are going to happen to me if i'm a few facility manufacturer I'm either going to get scared to death or I'm going to see a massive opportunity to partner with somebody or buy it or become a customer or whatever the case may be. Um, that's George, So let's George, go through. George, but, there's a third option, uh, which is often what happened with big, or, big organization. They're going to put their head in the sand and not want to see it. True. True, that, guys that's a, that's the third option. legacy, right? Right. Yeah. So let, let's go through them. Capex. Now, pe people, people now should go percent less. I, I don't even know what that means. That someone can build something ninety three percent for not for a cost that's ninety three percent less than okay. the status quo. I've never seen that in my life in any industry. That is you. because you need to understand how fume silica is made. Okay, and I do explain it very well under the note number four, okay, of the press release. And I'll explain it visually in, in 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 the new investor deck that comes out. The reason why fume silica is basically a closed industry, controlled by large, um, large, uh, basically chemical companies, large integrated, vertically integrated chemical company. Okay, it's because. To make the fume silica, you first need somebody to take quartz, turn into silicone metal. There's a cost to this, there's a capex to this. Okay. Then you need to have a technology, okay, to take that silicone metal and convert convert it to silicone tetrachloride. Okay. Then somebody takes that silicone tetrachloride. Add oxygen, hydrogen burns it and makes the fume silica, but creates H hydrogen chlorine gas as a side effect. So you have to manage all those issues. Now, these are three under basically, you know, when I have the discussion with them, they keep coming back to me and saying, Well, Bernard, our feedstock is the waste of another manufacturer. But the fact is, you can't start without all those issues. You can't, you, you can't take one piece out of the puzzle. It's impossible. Okay. So if we come in and make too much fume silica, then somebody's going to have an issue with too much silicone tetrachloride, how to deal with an, an environmental issue. That's how, that's why it is large integrated chemical companies that can work with other large integrated com technical companies that do it. That's why it's a low margin product because it's for them, it's a waste product. So for them, a 20% margin on what is shit, it's okay. But it doesn't give them the leeway to basically make the market grow because everything else has to move together. We come in, our black box, okay? And we don't need that fully integrated. We go directly from quartz to fume silica, one step. So our CapEx is, is minimal. As I'm having discussion with them, guys, stop bothering me. My CapEx is equivalent to your error margin in your project. Which is true. Your slippage. So that's that's capex. Yeah. Is I don't. I, we got to go through these because so, each one we could spend twenty minutes on. I'm gonna hop to EBITDA and then the carbon taxes. So we'll do the financial stuff first, mm -hmm. and then do the uh, yeah. the the carbon stuff second. So EBITDA margin, you just talked about. 
industry mm -hmm. standard 20% mm -hmm. with HPQ, with your reactor, 60 to 65%. You triple the margin. Mm -hmm. Again, these are things you normally see in things like artificial intelligence software. You don't see them in industry. Mm -hmm. um, again, if I'm in the fumes in the manufacturing world, I'm either getting terrified or I'm seeing a massive opportunity. But talk about EBITDA for a second, just th those margins. Well, I've already explained why those margins are, are low for the industry, because for them, it's sort of a waste byproduct that they're dealing with. Okay. So that's how they tolerate such a low EBITDA margin. But what's even worse is their EBITDA margins are going to be seriously affected by the carbon tax. Okay. When you have a 20% carbon tax, add 1,500 euros, $2,000 to an EBITDA. You, know, you sell at 10, you make 20, so you make two. Oh, it's going to cost me two in taxes. I'm now down to zero. It doesn't take a freaking genius to calculate this. Um, so that's where... That's where that's where all the EBITDA plays into. For them, they got they got the EBITDA issue. They they try to maintain their costs. It's a volume. It's a big issue. It's a, it's a big complex operation. Ours is simple, really simple. You know, quartz. So if you assume if you assume ten thousand dollars per ton, mm -hmm. uh, they're paying anywhere between seven and fifteen percent euros which in U.S. dollars at the top 15% is essentially 20%, wipes out their margin altogether. But, Whereas you're at 0.9 to 2 point, let's say 1 to 2% mm -hmm. European carbon tax impact mm -hmm. on a Euro basis. So let's say 1.5 mm -hmm. to 2.5, let's just say. Um, I mean, that alone is, is, a, is a company maker. Just that on its own is a company maker. And, and if you read correctly in the press release, okay, my robust numbers takes zero consideration to those tax to those carbon tax. We are the that's greenest, just the but I'm not. That's I don't. That's just a bonus. That's just a bonus, but it, it it's a bonus for me. It's a headache for them. Uh, so Energy even consumption. That, now let's go. Let, well, no, oh, there, go there's something. There's something more. People should go take a look at the EBITDA thing. Is so important for these big large conglomerate companies if people read the press release correctly and look the and go through the the reference where i explain how i got that 20 percent, they will also see that these big companies are willing to pay big bucks okay to improve a little bit their margin so there's an example in in the sources of the press release where um a company paid 600 million us dollars okay to acquire a company that was making $60 million of EBITDA, manufacturing fume silica. Why? Because that could help them increase by 5% their, um, their, their profit margin. So there is a history okay, of buying by a multiple of around 10, the EBITDA profit. So in a certain way, we only need to get ourselves up to generating uh, 100 million of EBITDA per year. And, you know, we could have a takeover at over a billion. Following that, that, that logic, you know, I'm going to put all the disclaimer, but that's, that's what it means. So entry point, low capex, exit point, high valuation to the EBITDA, to the cash flow generation capacity of the system. That's what makes the system even more important. That's why I need investors to, to understand, you know, oil and gas, you need gas in your car, no refinery. That's what it is. This is, of course, it's going to take me to go preaching and, and, and talk about this, but it will, it will get known. It will get clear. And once we got the pilot plant up and running, then it's, you know, nobody can question it because we will have third parties that come and validate all these numbers. Bernard, can you give us, if possible, the reaction of the company under NDA when you know they were when they when they saw these numbers? Okay, the, are you able to share that? No, I'm I'm not us? really able to. I'm not really able to share that because it 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 was shared in a series of discussion in and out and and, and those issues. Uh, they understand. 
the the problematic. What is very good is in my discussion with them, I was actually even able to make my uh, my financial model even stronger. In the sense that you know they showed me a few of the errors in my thinking, but still at the end, so it's very robust thinking. Even even with their corrections Why? to your original some some corrections to your original assumptions. And that's a good thing. This is not Bernard's first draft of the numbers based on your research. Well, this yes. is after you've had a specific talks with a manufacturer who's giving you better insight on industry numbers, some assumptions and things like that. So you're pretty, these numbers come with a high degree of confidence, give or take. Well, it's basically, you know, it's basically, percentages it's, very, either it, way, right? it's very easy to boost the numbers of those financial projections if you take it too high selling price. Yeah, you did and mention selling price in the press release. So, but you like, mentioned you know it what? here. It's, it's, like 10... it's, Why not? It's, it's, it's roughly, we, we actually took a number that was under 10. We took a number that was under 10 to be conservative. A thousand per ton? No, saying. no. No, below $10 a kilogram. We took a number that was below which 10. Is a thousand, $10. Which is, uh... which is $10,000 a ton. Right. So we was, but that's so you US were using dollar. an assumption of eight, nine, then in in, in in those ballpark figures. Okay. And you can get numbers well, where someone do back of the napkin math at home. Well, anyway, let, let them let them do whatever whatever it is. It doesn't change fundamentally at the stage where we are, the economic advantage are so big, okay, that Let's wait until we have the full feasibility independently back to, to show the full number, but we can show enough of the financial potential of this technology to, to, to generate the interest I'm looking for. So I want to pivot on that to your quote. And by the way, you can stop share screen if you'd like, uh, mm -hmm. or you can leave it there. Uh, less of our faces. Maybe everyone will be happier. Less of our faces. But yeah, here's okay. a quote. You've got a couple, but here's the one that I think is really relevant right now because of the wording you used. HPQ Silica is uniquely positioned to be the sole provider. That's a pretty big statement. The sole provider capable of supplying the materials required to meet the increasing demand for low-carbon fume silica products. This demand is anticipated to necessitate the deployment of numerous 1,000 mm -hmm. ton per year fume silica reactors in the near future. So there are two really huge statements, two of the biggest ones I've ever heard you. First one is sole provider. Mm -hmm. You've got a great deal of confidence from talking to your NDA partners, whatever you want to call them, your, your fellow signatories, that there's nobody else even close to HPQ Silicon right now in terms of being able to provide this level of fume silica no at, the, at, at this level we feel extremely confident i think the only other project i heard that was a low carbon one that we're trying to use corn husk to make fume silica trying to use what cocoa puffs corn ox the rest of a corn you know when you finish a corn yeah 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 so, corn unfortunately is you know corn corn they've the problem with corn and all that is because you know i've you study this in the biodiesel world is you're taking food off a plate of people or you're making food much more expensive for people. So that's always been the problem with corn. Well, but what they were trying to the do is, it, it, what they were trying to do is use the waste that wasn't converted into anything else and use it. Right. But and then the second part mm -hmm. of your quote is yeah. so that's great. That that the sole provider, that's pretty unbelievable. Not very many people are, are a Gorkov's on that position, I'll tell you that much. Um and to necessitate the deployment of numerous thousand ton per year fume silica reactors in the future. I mean, where does that, where does your confidence come from to say numerous? And I think we now know near future because you're saying that you believe by the end of the year, you'll have an offtake agreement or agreements, but for, for the numerous, first thousand ton, for the first thousand ton. For numerous, the, 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 when you see numerous, What's, what's your thinking? Define near in the future when you say that in the press release, if you don't mind. Okay, well, it's, you know, 
we're going to be starting with the first thousand ton. We get that system to work, and we're going to probably going to build a second one. And once we got that down, nothing stops us because the market's there. Nothing stops us from going from you know one ten fifty because eventually at one stage, organically with a, with a one point seven payback, okay, organically at one point we will get enough cash flow to finance the next the next multiple plants. So that's how the model was designed. So when I say numerous, um, it could go as high as 50 over 10 years. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for thanks for clarifying that. That's that's pretty uh that's pretty big. And you keep saying payback 1.7. I want to be clear. Payback period on uh this is coming from the press release per thousand ton per year reactor is around 1.7 years. Again, at this stage, in yeah, the manufacturing we'll... world, I don't think anybody has a 1.7 year payback on any kind of manufacturing mm. in, in, in industrial manufacturing. So that's a blow away number to me. I don't know if people picked that up in the press release, but I saw that and that, that, that raised my eyebrows. It's that, it's just a number. You make the math, you make the profit, you take a look how much it costs. That's it. It's scary how confident you get when the numbers speak for yourself. Um, that's all for me, man, as far as questions go. And hopefully we did a deep dive for everyone at home. But is there anything, I don't think there's anything we missed, but last words to you on how shareholders should be feeling here in the first week of January. And you start us off with a pretty powerful press release. People should remember that HPQ is more than just a fume silico. We also have our SIOX work that we're doing for batteries, which I believe will, will be very as exciting, and our hydrogen work for for uh, that we're doing. Um, so HPQ is really well positioned to have to, to for 2024 really be a good year toward, you know eventually starting to get contracts for, for the fume silica or off takes agreement so we can build and finance and the, the next plant doing those type of issues. And we'll be, we'll be talking more about the battery works. And as I said, I'm following the same strategy I did with the fume silica, which we wait, we wait until, you know, we do it before we really start talking more aggressively, but HPQ is well positioned. I wouldn't bet against HPQ success. Um, if you do your call, not mine. But we are, we are, we are aware of, of. How can I say, like some bottom line illegal active trading going on, which is basically based on a lot of uh, spooling, false sale orders. Um, I'm I'm writing to to the regulators about this. I've seen multiple times uh, in the last five minutes of tradings, suddenly by magic, you know. 200,000 shares of, uh, appeared on the ask side for multiple, same houses, multiple orders. Why? No logic to it. So I understand that. That's 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 a market dynamic. But fundamentally, the company never been in the best position with regard to the project that we have. And we will be seeing a lot of each other this year. You sure hope so, because you sure hell saw a hell of a lot of each other last year. Mm. Uh, and, I, and, and I loved it. Uh, we always we always joke about it that I come off the beach in Greece to do these things, uh, mm -hmm. but I enjoy them and I know the shareholders love them. Uh, they they really except for the funsters who no matter what are going to make fun of uh, my interruptions, your shirts, our comments, whatever. And and that by the way just makes us laugh. I hope everyone knows it. It just gives mm -hmm. us a lot of laughter because at the end of the day, you've delivered everything you've said you're going to deliver, uh, and here we are with. A pretty powerful press release, pretty powerful numbers, uh, three NDA signed. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing how just this, if we had nothing else, just the fume silica would be exciting, let alone the other parts of the company you talked about. Thanks for joining us, Bernard. And I don't know, for all I know, I'm going to have you back in a week from now. I wouldn't be surprised if next Wednesday, Thursday, we're back together again. But until then, thank you. Good luck. And I say on behalf of all shareholders, keep it going, buddy. Thank you. For anyone at home, you've been watching or you've been listening to my podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Bernard Turio, CEO of HPQ Silicon, Trades in Canada HPQ, Trades in Canada HPQFF. Start your due diligence on the Gorecom and then get over the HPQ Silicon website for your deep dive due diligence. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time.
Hey small cap fam, I hope you loved this interview because more than a dozen people were involved in its production for the sole purpose of making you happy. If so can you take a moment to support both our awesome guest company and Agora.com? Your engagement means the world to us. First, if you enjoyed this video give us a thumbs up by tapping that like button. It's a small gesture that helps this interview reach even more potential investors to discover today's guest. Second, we would love to hear your feedback on this interview, so please leave a comment below. Be sure to keep it clean, but feel free to poke fun at George. If you loved what you heard on today's video and want to dig into our guest company right away, take a look at the links in the description below. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to never miss another great Agora Calm small cap video. Thank you so much. We couldn't do any of this without you. Make sure to come back soon.